Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're going to talk about importing and ingesting media into Final Cut Pro X version 10.0.6. The reason I'm pointing out a version is because in 10.0.6 they unified their import media dialog box. In prior versions there was an import from camera and import files dialog box. Now there's just import media. You'll see under my drive, Mac Drive 3, I created an event called FCPX Tutorials. Go ahead and create one on your drive, uh, naming whatever you'd like, and select Import Media. It's going to open up the Media Import uh, window. Inside there on the left, you'll see the, the available cameras. Right now, I have a Canon 7D Compact Flash memory card connected to a Compact Flash card reader connected to my computer. It shows up as EOS Digital. Alternatively, you could have Firewire-based cameras as well as USB-based cameras connected to your computer, um, and they would show up here as well. Under the devices, it shows you all your hard drives as well as CD-ROM and DVD drives um, that have media that can be imported, any camera archives, which we'll talk about in one second, and any of your favorites. So if you traverse one of your device folders, you can add it as a favorite here in your favorites lists. So let's say I want to back up this EOS Digital uh, Compact Flash Card in one shot. That's what camera archives are for. I can come down here to Create Archive. And when I do so, it brings up a dialog box. Well, the footage on this camera are flowers, so I'll go ahead and call it flowers underscore in today's date, which is 12.01.2012. It allows you only to select a destination drive, and that's because it puts it in a a preset folder so Final Cut Pro X knows where it is. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it at the default uh, of my main drive line and click OK. When I do so, you'll notice it's creating an archive here and there was a little uh, clock, if you will, circling. When I click it, you'll notice that uh, it doesn't show up. This is a strange bug, but usually it should show the same listing. I'll show you one workaround that I found uh, that allows you to show this media. So if you traverse to your user's home directory, the movies directory, you'll see that there's a fam Final Cut Camera Archives folder. Inside there you'll see the camera uh, archive. If we want to see what's inside this, we can right click and go to Show Package Contents and it will be just the same as my uh, Compact Flash Card. And you'll see all the videos listed here. If I go back and I just add a letter for example, I say B and then I come back over here and I click on it, you'll notice it mounts the drive. I can come back over, remove the B, click on this, and for some reason the drive is not being remounted. So I'm not sure what that bug is all about, but by just doing a quick name change, you can come back over and it should mount your drive. And here it's not doing it, that's awesome. Maybe if I put a C, there we go. So strange bug, but um, your files are still there. You can go show package contents. You can back that up onto alternative media, other hard drives, etc., cetera, um, to say a store for safekeeping. We'll switch back over to the EOS Digital uh, Compact Flash Card. You'll notice that I have two different views. Right now I'm in list view. If we want to switch over to clip view, we can click on this button here. You'll notice that I have a few clips here along with some graphic uh, overlays. These graphic overlays are from uh, Magic Lantern's uh, Canon 7D uh, EOS firmware update. Um, so that's why they're there. Alternatively, you'll see that these clips have some little underlines in them. That means that they have been imported before. So if I went over here to this little uh, light switch, clicked on it, and clicked Hide Imported Clips, it would hide those selections of those clips. I'm not going to do that, so I'll uncheck it. You can show audio waveforms. If the file has an associated waveform, you'll notice that it shows the waveforms. Over here, you'll notice that there's none for the graphics. We can adjust the clip height by moving this slider here. We can also change the amount of time per clip, so if I drag this down all the way down to half a second, it's showing us the largest view per clip. I'm going to go ahead and drag that back over to all. I can import a full clip 
I can import play ranges within the clip. So if I come over to this click and press the spacebar, press I to select an endpoint, press O to select an out point, and press spacebar to uh, stop the playhead, I've now selected a play range. Alternatively, for this clip, I can just move the playhead somewhere, press I on my keyboard to select an endpoint, press O to select an out point. If I want to create a second play range, I can move my playhead somewhere else. I can press Command Shift I and then move my playhead and press Command Shift O to select a second or third or fourth play range for a clip. Um, now, if I want to import these three clips, these two selected play ranges, this selected play range, and this whole clip, I need to make sure that they're selected. Right now, if I clicked on Import Selected, it would just import these two selected play ranges. So if I come over here and press uh, while holding the Command key and click on these two clips, now you'll notice that this clip, this play range, and these two play ranges are selected. If I click on Import Selected, it brings up the next dialog box. It asks me where I want to put this media. If I want to put it into the Final Cut Pro X tutorials uh, event that I created earlier, I'll leave it uh, selected here. I could select another uh, event by clicking on the down arrow there. Alternatively, I could create a new event and select which drive I want that event to exist on by clicking this uh, radio button here. Under organizing, because this media sits on a compact flash card and not on one of my hard drives, there is no option to uncheck copy files to Final Cut's events folder. Also importing folders as keyword collections. If this was sitting on my hard drive in some type of folder uh, structure, that folder structure could be smart uh, keyword collections assigned to the clips. Um, alternatively, if I was importing from my hard drive, and I wanted to leave that media in its original location, I could uncheck this checkbox, but I'm obviously not doing that from the camera. Under transcoding, create optimized media creates ProRes 422 files. Um, so if you're going to have multiple HD streams uh, uh, edited as well as played back in Final Cut Pro X by checking this box, although it's going to result in larger file size, Final Cut Pro X can deal with ProRes a lot better than it can deal with uh, H.264 format, which is what the Canon 7D uh, records in, along with many other uh, DSLRs. Create, uh, create proxy media. So even though uh, Final Cut Pro X can deal with ProRes 422 quite well, if you're using multiple streams and your system isn't too beefy, then creating proxy media creates um, the proxy version of ProRes 422, which is a much smaller file size. Also, the quality is not the same, but remember, this is just being used for playback within Final Cut Pro X. When you ultimately render your timeline, you'll be rendering your timeline and referencing the original media that was copied from your camera or card. Next, you have video and audio options. You can remove pull down if there was pull down in your footage. You can analyze for balanced color. I typically don't do that um, because I don't use balanced color in uh, Final Cut Pro X. However, um, you can always do this after the fact anyway, so it's a good idea to leave this unchecked. If you want to analyze for balanced color later, you can do that. If you want to find people, what find people does is figures out how many people are in a shot and then creates uh, smart keyword collections uh, based on that. You also see in under audio, you can analyze and fix audio problems. This can also be done after the fact, so I usually don't have that checked. If you want to separate your mono tracks and group your stereo tracks, you can click this button. And if you want to remove any silent channels, so let's say your camera records four mono signals and only one of those signals was being used to record, then this can remove those empty four, uh, three audio tracks. If I go ahead and click on import, it's going to close that dialog box, and the reason it did so, I'm going to go ahead and press Command-I to open it one more time, is because I have this button checked. Let's say I had multiple cameras here that I wanted to import footage from. Um, after I finish with one, if I had this unchecked and I clicked on import, then I could continue working in this dialog box. I'm going to go ahead and press the red button to close it. We'll notice over here that I have the four clips here in my timeline. Remember, the, these last two are just different play ranges from the same clip. If you click on the background tasks right here, um, you'll notice that it's currently finished uh, importing. These clips were extremely small, so it didn't take much time at all. 
Guys, I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, guys, I'm out.